What's up, you Dilberts? We're here with the Starving Podcast, and I'd like to introduce some of our sponsors. Our first sponsor is Geno Palette. This is a company that actually uh, analyzes your DNA and your specific genes. So, the reason this is important is because your genes define how you eat and how you might accelerate performance, weight loss, or any other goals you may have. So, if you want to determine what your DNA and how it's linked to your nutritional profile, maybe you want to know if you're sensitive to lactose or gluten, or you want to know how you metabolize different macronutrients like protein, carbs, and fat, head over to Geno Geno Palette, use the link in our bio, and use code CBG for $20 off your order. Our next sponsor is X Endurance, and this is one of the best supplement companies on the market. I'm biased, but they're the best. They are third-party tested, and this is one of the only supplement companies out there that actually third-party test all of their products, okay? Um, This is important because, unfortunately, there's a lot of ped use amongst the uh, different communities in all sports. So if you want to make sure to you want to avoid different PEDs, you want to go through a company that third-party tests all of their products. Also, they have everything you need. They have immune support. They have creatine, different proteins. So go over to their website through through the link in our bio and make your first order and get 10% off. Our third sponsor is Performa Sleep. Now, Performa Sleep sells mattresses that are are actually antimicrobial because they have copper infused. Okay, Uh, They're comfortable as hell. It feels like sleeping on a cloud. Okay, Me and my wife sleep on the king every night and she doesn't hear me when I get out of bed, when I go to use the bathroom, and vice versa. Very, very comfortable. So if you need one for you and your partner, go ahead and order that King or California King. But if your girlfriend or boyfriend just dumped you and you need an alternative, no problem. They have single mattresses as well. Use the link in our bio and code CBG75 for $75 off your mattress. Our fourth sponsor is CBG. Skies are incredibly smart and some of the best nutrition coaches in the world, okay, from some of the top universities and registered dietitians. So if you want a customized nutrition plan, head over to Consistency Breeds Growth and use code CBG for 15% off customized nutrition for either 16 weeks or 24 weeks, however long you think you need to get those abs for the summer. Today we're going to be talking about Uh, an emerging topic over the last couple of years, uh, and it hasn't been talked about much within the scope of nutrition coaching and fitness and training, and that's artificial intelligence. So let's go ahead and get started. It's science. Yo, what's up, Jordan? How's it going, buddy? Hey now, hey now. How are you? This is what dreams are made of. Dreams, dreams come true on this podcast and nowhere else. I've made my That's piece right. with that, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you excited? Today we're going to be talking about artificial intelligence. Hell yeah. I, when you when you mentioned artificial intelligence, all I kept thinking of was the Terminator and just screaming how Skynet has gone live. And it's been really hard to read the articles and think about anything besides that. So, it was, it was a nice change from doing my research on more Terminator movies to then mm-hmm. reading about applicable artificial intelligence. <laughs> So what a term the Terminator's jacked as hell. So I mean, just jacked. Maybe there's something to the, there's yeah. something to this artificial intelligence. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so for those of you that don't know, artificial intelligence is the development of computer systems, okay, uh, that basically perform tasks that would normally require human intelligence. Okay. So currently, uh, if you don't know, uh, there's um, a very in, one of the most intelligent guys. Uh, of our generation, Elon Musk, who is actually uh, developing systems like this for uh, vehicles. So generation and uh, selling of autonomous vehicles. So where uh, a human can be in the car uh, and not have to drive um, at all. The, the vehicle essentially uses sensor technology and puts it into a computer system. That computer system provides updates towards vehicles so that it understands the mechanism of the road. So uh, how far a a car is in front of another vehicle, behind, on the sides. Um, So 
this, this technology is emerging and it's not in a place yet where everyone can be on the road and driving autonomously. However, there are autonomous vehicles and there are people, um, you know, that can use this technology if they buy a Tesla, for example, which is the company that he owns. So, um, yeah, this is ex extremely interesting. I think that um, it does cause a generation in jobs for humans, uh, especially um, in the trucking industry, for example. The trucking industry and the transport of goods and, uh, and things like that, if that went autonomous, millions of jobs that are dependent upon the truck industry in the United States would be halted and would be taken over essentially by computer systems. Terminators. Um, yeah, Terminators, yeah, which easily. is kind of a scary, a scary thing. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, yeah, AI, it, it's, it can be a good or bad thing, you know? Yeah. AI is getting pretty big in the sciences too. I mean, I only know of my, in my very narrow, uh, research window, they're trying to automate, uh, diatom and al like algae identification. Uh, and the idea there is you can train a machine. So this, this idea with artificial intelligence is that you like continually feed data to it, but you use a, the human mind to say, okay, you know, this particular algo looks like this and the, and the machine learns it. And I use very large air quotations in there. It learns that this particular alga is, you know, however big or small, uh, long or wide, but yeah. Uh, yeah, then it goes, it can be fed through the machine and then the, it can be, uh, can be done. They have, I know, uh, Facebook has, uh, what is it? Some, some different like picture, like facial recognition is also partly AI. It's also partly another field called morphometrics, which is just fancy speak for, you know, the shape and size and descriptors of your face or whatever you're looking at. But yeah, the, the AI, especially as we get into the topic too, is really dependent on the information that you initially put into it. And if you have crap garbage information going into it first, then you're going to train your AI wrong. It's kind of like raising a kid. If you don't raise the kid right and be strict, then he's going to be, I don't know, taking his pants off in public and stuff and raising, raising hell. So, right. Yeah. I think that's why, um, you know, as we transition, uh, into talking specifically about artificial intelligence for the fitness industry, um, we have to think about ways of getting objective data into uh, the computer systems if we're going to use AI. I think subjective data like um, did you eat you know, healthy this meal? Did How do you, you put feel that into today? The computer <laughs> system? How do you feel today? <laughs> Th this, is, this is eventually going to bog the computer system down with potentially incorrect information. Um, and there are apps and, and other things out there that are hinting at uh, going towards artificial intelligence for fitness and nutrition. Um, and the reason I think a system like this would be useful if uh, it did come to fruition uh, is by now, if, if you're still looking online to find the best diet, then you're past the curve. So let me, let me update you with a little bit of information. Here we it, go. It is known. Yeah, it, it, is, it is now being totally accepted by the scientific consensus, okay, um, that there is not a one diet fits all approach. <gasps> so the people – yeah. No. <laughs> what, what do you know? <laughs> so like the people out there that are promoting just vegan for everyone, they are incorrect. Hell no. The people that are – yeah, the people that are just um, promoting intermittent fasting for everyone is incorrect. The, the dieting coaches out there that aren't selling one specific stylistic diet uh, are on the road to figuring out a, um, the perfect diet for the individual. Okay, um, So it, it's, th this is why I think artificial intelligence could be extremely helpful. So imagine – a scenario where um, you input your DNA, like for example, we have a company called Genopallet that we work with that analyzes your genes and determines how you metabolize different foods, uh, whether uh, you're likely to be deficient in particular uh, vitamins, 
uh, based on um, you know your you, you know your DNA and how things were passed down to you from ancestors before, right? Just extremely useful uh, information. If you could upload this into the computer system um, and upload uh, other objective information like uh, what your blood pressure is, if you can get something to take your blood pressure every morning and after each meal. Um, and there are other factors that we'll go through. But if you could upload this every day, there is a scenario where um, the, it, the computer system would take other people like you and start matching you with a perfect diet and how you should eat, how many meals, uh, how much, um, depending on what your goals are, which you would also define to the computer system. And from there, all you got to do is say, hey, Siri, what should I eat today? And Siri tells you when your next meal is going to be, what you're going to be eating how much you're going to be eating of it. And that's it. I mean, this is a powerful, powerful thing. Um, and we'll get into some scenarios why it's likely not to be um, something that's useful uh, for the American population at least. But this is an attractive option for some people yeah, I think, um, that are extremely disciplined. You know. Yeah, I think that the that one benefit that it has and that you see people, um, people are more, more happy. I don't know if happy is the word. Um, they're more available or open to the idea of incorporating technology and science into their daily lives. So we all have, we all have apps for everything. Some of us wear the, the, the wearable devices. I know we talked about, uh, whoop on the last podcast with, with Macy, but, the interesting thing about AI is that instead of relying just on one data source or one input, you get to go crazy with your data. You can have your your blood glucose measured. You can have your your heart rate through the wearables. You can also have your your DNA input. You can have your 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 own diet so uh, input so you can tell you know you can have some. Uh, subjective information in there that the computer can code say, you know, I don't like um, like what food you like and stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, and the AI can take this and generate something out. And the cool thing with AI, which may or it's it it still remains to be seen, is that if you're if you're training a certain way, or if you're not training a certain way, if uh, if a coach is more biased towards one way of prescribing a diet to you you may become influenced by that. Whereas AI is just using those ones and zeros, you know, it's data in and it's data out. Whereas a coach might be more biased to say, Hey, you know, why don't we jack up the carbs and you just move or something, you know, go run or something. And the, right. you know, the AI might say, Hey, okay, let's, let's take a step back. And, uh, you know, it's, it can be kind of cold and freak people out, but it's, it's only as good as the, the data that's going in. But if you have it from a number of different sources, which is, I think was what is appealing to people now, because you can get all sorts of workups on done on yourself. I know here a, a popular thing that, um, a coach at the gym, she went and had her, uh, her like VO two max done. They like strapped her up to a bike, had her pedal. They took blood work. Then they did a whole bunch of other stress tests that I have absolutely no idea, but you can incorporate that. And she incorporates that into her training now too. And if you mm -hmm. had an application that could kind of crank through all of that information for you, so you don't, you know, it takes it takes away a lot of the guessing game that uh, yeah. you know the bro science <laughs> that can the get bro messed science. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that um, you know, and this is um, one way to get at customized nutrition uh, because everyone's individual. Everyone's going to have their their different data. They're going to input it into the computer computer system and, and go from there. And I think this is a problem that's a lot easier to solve than uh, getting every vehicle on the road to be autonomous, for example. So this is why it's potentially, potentially attractive. And, um, you know, un unfortunately, uh, if you haven't got this already, it eliminates the needs for coaches like myself, um, and others around the world. I mean, the fitness, fitness industry is huge. Um, which brings up, you know, obviously universal base income. So where essentially everyone gets a certain amount of money 
um, even if they're not working, because robots are basically taking care of, uh, of everything like this. But, um, you know, it, it's a possibility for the future. Who knows if it's going to happen in the next 50, 100 years or who would use it. But uh, personally, I think it's probably the most applicable for performance athletes. Um, so athletes that don't need a coach to tell them to get to work and don't need to tell them um, to, you know, if you're a UFC fighter, keep fighting in a cage if you broke your arm, like Paige Van Zandt two, three fights ago Jesus. when she broke her arm and she just kept fighting. Like, the, the, you don't need a coach to tell you to keep fighting. You're just going to keep fighting. Um, whereas someone who doesn't have, uh, you know, uh, the discipline – uh, or is having underlying human disease problem, comorbidities, may need the accountability of a coach and things like that as opposed to an app or Surrey or someone not real, someone that doesn't care, tell them what their next meal needs to be and how. They're not going to respond as well to that. Um, so that's really my concern uh, about it. And Yeah, there's... It, you know, the, the, yeah, the U.S., 70% of people in the U.S. have, you know, are, are on their way or have already developed some type of human disease. And that's without artificial intelligence. With, 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 without any coaches at all, I don't know what would happen. And it's not out of the question that AI and fitness coaches can start to coexist. They can start to coexist. Yeah. So where the performance athletes use the AI and other people that need the attention, the accountability and things can use a customized coach like we we do currently at, at Consistency Breeds Growth, you know? Yeah, I think that the you know, humans are are a social being and I think as we've all begun to see being in quarantine, even the people that, you know, that say, "Oh, I, I hate being out in public. I I hate doing this or that." It's not as it's not as real as you as you think it is. I, I think that um, having having something like AI to integrate the science into your life can be great, but I also believe that um, that having somebody there to to push you and hold you accountable. I mean, there's the, those intangible things that we haven't quite figured out how to make a machine produce. You know, how to be motivating for a person. Other than just you know like that good morning text from your from your uh, fasting app that says hey you should be starting your fast or almost getting done that's a lot different than calling somebody in the middle of the night and say hey you know I'm I'm not feeling too well I need to change my training for tomorrow you know it's you really do ride this fine line between uh, having things become too scientific or too uh, making things more complicated than they need to be. But I, I do think that the AI and individual coaching has their, they both have their merits and I think that they can coexist, but each should kind of no, be able to know and define the roles. And ultimately AI is, the role of AI is defined by us, by the people who are using it, who, mm -hmm. who will, you know, make this technology evolve because hell, I remember taking a computer science course uh, 10, 15 years ago at this at this point, you know, late in high school. And then none of that information is is applicable anymore. The you know, the technological growth within the last 20 years is just is incredible. And even researching for this, you know, getting into some of the machine learning papers is like, oh, God, I really don't know anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you if you're seriously looking towards the future, um computer science and everything related to artificial intelligence is definitely a skill that uh, is going to be extremely useful. And, you know, I think that there are already applications uh, and uh, different types of monitoring out there um, where coaches are using AI to, to help the client. So, like, imagine a scenario where an athlete just uploads – uh, you know, the coach says upload these five things, these 10 things into uh, this app. They upload it into the app. The app spits out the customized dieting plan and that coach 
takes that dieting plan, puts it in a format that he, he or she feels is appropriate for the client that they're working with to adhere to, um, and then just helps them along the way for three, six months, however long the, the coach is helping them, them for. So this doesn't necessarily eliminate the, uh, the need for coaches, uh, but it does require that the coach understand the techni- uh, you know, the tech behind, um, you know, all of the artificial intelligence that going on and understanding those systems. And, uh, you know, you know, there, there are things out there that are sort of already like this. Like if you look at the whoop that, that Jordan mentioned, it measures your resting heart rate. It measures your heart rate variability, which is a dictator of, um, you know, essentially how much strain and stress, uh, you're incorporating into your life from training and other, uh, emotional stress. And it basically spits out numbers that tell you whether you, you know, you're recovered or not from your previous day of training. I mean, this is extremely valuable. They also have, uh, continuous glucose monitors now. So like where you wear a monitor on and it tells you at different points of the day what your blood glucose level is. So this is how you process carbs. And there's a lot of data out there now in the scientific literature that suggests that how well you process and have how long you retain blood glucose uh, after a meal and how high your blood glucose level is after a meal can give uh, a lot of indications towards, um, you know, uh, human disease and health markers. So, not only performance markers, but health markers, obviously, for people in regards to weight loss and other things. So um, this is happening. It's continuing to improve. The sensor technology is continuing to improve. And there are trackers out there for health and performance. It's about taking all of them, combining them into something, which is what coaches are doing, uh, but instead have uh, basically – computer systems that are defined as artificial intelligence do it. And then either the client hire a coach to work with them on that information or do it themselves. I mean, this is really the, what it really boils down to. And I think that becomes extremely useful. Um, you know, whether you use the Geno palette data that we've been discussing that analyzes your DNA and it tells you, you keto, and me paleo yeah. or, uh, you know, these types of things. I mean, this is incredibly valuable shit. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is what we've been trying to get at for like, you know, a hundred years since, uh, obesity and, uh, a plethora of food have taken over the majority of the world. Um, whereas, you know, a hundred, 150 years ago, you know, that wasn't necessarily the case, you know, you had food, but, uh, it wasn't at, you know, the extent to where you walk into a grocery store and everything's available at, at any time, <laughs> you know, it's, it's being able to, uh, to make informed decisions. I, I was listening to, um, I was actually listening to one of Rhonda Patrick's, uh, podcasts yesterday and I forget what the topic was being discussed. It's, it's not important, but they brought up this idea that, you know, uh, most physicians, I mean, this is again, a very gross generalization, most physicians, just because of their workload, can be five to ten. <laughs> five to ten. Uh oh. Um, Ricky. Ricky. <laughs> Ricky wants to say hi. Um, physicians can. Be... <laughs> stop it, Ricky. He he's got a he wants to be on the doesn't podcast. Stop. Yeah, it's all right. He does. Yeah, he doesn't shut up. Um, but this idea of being behind on the literature, whereas uh, nowadays through. Uh, a lot of these apps that you can interface with the research community and have this feedback where you're taking their research and maybe applying it through an app and then you give up some of your data back to them and this feedback loop of you're improving their research so ultimately you can um, you know help improve your sleep or whatever the case may be but um, the point I was trying to get is that you, if you have these informed decisions through applications, you could then bring these to your primary health healthcare provider and say, Hey, I've been tracking my sleep, been tracking my glucose. You know, why don't we integrate this into a, a better diet plan? Um, I think Justin and I have belabored the fact throughout our 
growing library of podcasts now that, you know, maybe the information that we were sold growing up with the food pyramid isn't the best uh, as far as a diet. And like we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, that there is no one diet for everybody. So if you have the food pyramid from, you know, 19 something or another, and I think it's like a food plate now, or I forget what they do, but if it was generated that long ago, and God under God knows who was who was funding this, it it's probably not very applicable now, especially that we have all these different levels of research to be uh, to be brought in onto it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think now uh, you know all of not all of the myths, but a majority. I mean, there are three. There, there are a number of variables here. It's, it's caloric intake, protein, carbs, fat, and it's been, um, oh my gosh. I mean, for the last 50 years, it's just been debated. This, this uh, eat less carbs to lose weight, yeah. eat less fat to lose weight. Don't eat saturated fat. Uh, don't, don't eat sugar, uh, eat more vegetables, eat less vegetables, eat a carnivore diet, you know? And now I think finally, uh, the, the, the literature and the scientific consensus is getting to a position where people are really starting to understand that it's not a one size fit all approach and that there's, um, you know, the data that's going to be input originally by scientists into the artificial intelligence to get it going is not going to be the incorrect information. Yeah. And like if you input the F and food pyramid, into the artificial intelligence computer system and then people start uploading their stuff, you're going to get spit out the diets based on fallacies of the food pyramid, which is not good. So like now I think we're in a position where dieting coaches can understand and do understand, um, especially with the help of practitioners, registered dietitians, uh, and PhDs, um, you know, uh, with exercise nutrition, that the right original input into the uh, the system uh, will benefit people greatly once they start to upload their objective data into it. So, um, wow, man. I mean, I, I'm like, yeah, I'm torn between it because I'm a coach, obviously, but I, I'm hoping that I can start integrating systems uh, with artificial intelligence more and more. Uh, I mean, I've already, I already have, but um, more and more so that it, it not only makes my job easier, but I'm able to help my client and athletes better, you know, because yeah. I, I can only research so much about one person's individual case, you know? Yeah. I, um, I think that there's, but I think the, the benefit of having you and your team and I'm emphasizing team tackle this is that everybody has their, their own particular specialty that they deal with and that, you know, you can have a team feeding into an application or, uh, you know, uh, this library of data that you can then go and, and cherry pick that, you know, for what you need for a specific client, say a fighter or like some guy like me that just does pull-ups in his backyard. What up, quarantine? But, you know, you can use a team to cherry pick these, uh, the applicable data that, you know, that need to be, that needs to be done. But you also have, um, like I mentioned earlier, those intangibles, you know, most everybody can do yoga with an app now, but there's a completely different experience and something that goes on with your, this, your psychology, which is something we've not even talked about with AI yet, as it regards to humans and nutrition is that, you know, I can have, I can, Justin and I do this podcast remotely. We can have this conversation this conversation would be totally infinitely more interesting and dynamic if he and I were in the same room. The same logic would apply to dieting as well and coaching. You know, a computer is not, you know, is not going to really pick you up after you have had a rough day. That's where a coach would come in. It's that, um, again, it's that those small psychological things because we are social beings, you know, not to get all yeah. hippie sounding, but I think there that's where a team, a dedicated coach really steps up. It's taking that science and synthesizing it and then adding all those, those human elements to it as well. That's just, that's my opinion. I think you're safe. You're going to have a job. I yeah. promise. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And I think, uh, yeah, I mean, you just can't party on Zoom, as people are finding out now, as you can party in person. I mean, this is the reality <laughs> with a lot of things. So it's going to be the same thing when it when it comes to coaching and other things like that. And I think uh, one thing I will say uh, about CrossFit and, and Greg Glassman, uh, the generation of CrossFit, is that it's brought together, um, you know, group fitness uh to a place where it's never really been before and obviously a lot of spinoffs of that orange theory and other things i think are actually uh con- conducive to um preventing the uh you know or halting at least and maybe even improving the obesity uh problem uh and human disease problem in the u.s at least because um crossfit is obviously bigger in the u.s than it is anywhere else and uh this type of of, uh, you know, group fitness and going to a gym and competing with others and, and suffering together is something that can't be done over Zoom. I mean, we're doing it now uh, at, at the gym that I go to, CrossFit Speakeasy. Uh, freaking incredible coaches, incredible people that have completely improvised, um, you know, working remotely with people to make sure that they can still provide fitness and things like that to their members. And, they're, and it's awesome. Um, but you know, it's just the reality. You're not, you're not, you don't have the, the appropriate equipment. You're not there with anyone else. So you're kind of at a disconnect and, um, you're not able to get the same level of fitness in. Yeah. And it's, it's much harder to, to sign into the, the zoom class than it, it actually is to walk into the gym because you get to interact with so many people on, um, you know, a level that's not, you know, through, you know, your sweatpants sitting on your couch about to work out. It's just a bit of a dynamic, you know, it's different. And I think this is where the real problem of artificial intelligence comes in, where coaches are completely replaced. So, and I would say, you know, just to wrap it up, it's, you know, the, a coach is the logic between the capitalist food industry and generalized nutrition apps, you know, and it, it likely is and always will be the future. So, um, Terminators, Terminators, Terminators. man, (laughs) Terminators. Oh man. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd like to wrap it up. That was, that was awesome. Uh, thanks everybody for listening, um, with us on artificial intelligence as it pertains to the fitness industry, uh, for both, uh, working out strength, conditioning, training, and nutrition. Uh, please check out our sponsors in our show notes. If you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, and, Peace out. Bye. Science.